care about current affairs, it's on the old show. And when you want to get clear what's going on here, it's on the old show. If you like to stay in the know, tune yourself into the old show, it's the old show. Laura Babcock. Welcome the to the old show. show, Canada's current affairs show with strong opinions. And yeah, we have some today because the scandal panel was not going to be working this week. We were all going to just enjoy the start of summer until Ontario Premier Doug Ford did some stuff so egregious that we had to scramble the jets, as it were, and get the guys here this Monday morning. So if you're catching this on Monday or Tuesday or throughout the week as you start your summer holidays, uh, Doug Ford is making us work very hard in Ontario to stand up for what is right and to call bullshit on his scandals. And there are two new ones just this weekend. Before we get into the panel, I just want to bring up some stuff coming up on the pod. As mentioned, we have our special on homelessness in Canada. It is great. There are two experts, one with lived in experience and one working on the front lines. And they're going to tell us just how bad it really is, how bad it's going to get, and the only things that are going to work to fix it. So every Canadian will want to listen to that special. We're also working to speak with Elizabeth uh, May, the, she's the head of the Green Party federally, we want to talk to her about this climate summer and foreign interference and all, all that kind of good stuff. So that'll be coming up on the pod. Subscribe on YouTube or Spotify, Apple Pods, wherever you get it. And thank you for all of you outside of Canada who listen to the podcast as well. Okay. Hey guys, without further ado, let's get into it. Two blockbuster scandalous announcements came out Friday afternoon, which is when every government tries to hide things from the people. You know, busy week in Ontario, busy week in Canada, and people were not really looking for news scoops at 3 p.m. on Friday. So what came out that was so big that it got all of our attention and had us all raging all weekend? Well, Doug Ford decided that because of a small roof repair report, $40 million to fix the Ontario Science Center by the winter, he decided he's going to just shut down and put a big fence around the Ontario Science Center, a one of the most cherished cultural aspects and architectural buildings in Ontario. And that got people furious. And I was fighting about it on the radio in Toronto this morning, and I'll rant about it in a couple of minutes. Uh, but the reality is, it was a decision that nobody bought. So I did an op-ed in the Toronto Star that came out on Saturday, just talking about, you know, the real values of Premier Ford and the values of Ontarians and whether or not they're aligned and whether or not we need to make this an election for change, uh, because there's a whole lot of scandal and a whole lot of things that Doug Ford is doing that's hurting Ontario. Uh, so I had that op-ed and then I heard from people across the province all weekend long. That was just on the Ontario Science Centre, guys. Then there was, of course, snuck in there. Maybe there's a reason the two came out the same afternoon that Ford's pet project of the Ontario line is uh, almost what 43% over budget in one year, costing billions in overruns. Did they not tell us the numbers accurately up front? Are they hiding something in this again? More billions being thrown out the door that could go to healthcare, that could go to people living with disabilities in this province, that could go to seniors and long-term care. And I just got to thank Dr. Vivian because her show on long-term care uh, absolutely went viral. Like it's been crazy how many people uh, love that. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. Okay, long intro, but a busy ass weekend. So Keith, um, uh, in addition to all the other stuff that we all try to do in the summer on our weekends, right? Uh, Keith Leslie, you've been at Queens Park forever. You know what it is to do a Friday afternoon newser to, to kind of hide it in the busy weekend. Am I overstating how this Ontario Science Centre story blew up? Is this the scandal that I believe it to be at the level of the Greenbelt scandal? I think it could even go beyond that because it's much simpler to understand. You've got a leaky roof. Do you tear the house down? <laughs> I mean, it's really, it, it's that simple. And we know that uh, this government and the previous Liberal government did not do the necessary maintenance that needed to be done on the Ontario Science Centre. But what we have here is a summer Friday afternoon drive-by shooting by the Ford government. Is, is basically deadly. They, okay, we're going to immediately shut it permanently. Now, people were inside. Fences were being erected outside. <laughs> Some poor woman had her wedding planned there for this weekend. Uh, other events. I mean, I'm sure there were a few class trips yet to come as well. 
and apparently, the, the, you know, the, the warning in the engineer's report was there's there's several patches, small patches that are, they total, I think, like less than five or ten percent. It's not a lot of the roof area of three buildings that they need to be addressed by Halloween, by October 31st this year. And that apparently those repairs were only like four or five hundred thousand dollars. Someone online said, I'll pay the bill. Right. Just re do the repairs. I'll pay that bill. Yes, it's 40 million over five years. If we get you know the, the maintenance has been ignored and not done. But this, this was just so blatantly political. And what really, really shocked me in this one was the lack of good government messaging as to why you're doing this on a Friday afternoon, erecting the fences. You know, Infrastructure Ontario CEO held a news conference and said, you know, well, uh, you know, there's $40 million. We can't afford it. The engineer's report says it's going to collapse. We can't have people underneath that. But nowhere was there, you know, a politician or even someone like him saying, comparing it to that, that, that uh, mall roof collapse in Sudbury that killed people. Or bringing others, you know, safety is just saying, you know, we just couldn't have families going through that. But there was none of that. It was just let people go nuts on this. You know, given the engineering report. But when you read the engineering report, you went, well, this is minor, you know, small ball potato, uh, uh, small potato fixes that could be done by Halloween. Yes, you'd have to cordon off areas underneath as if there were a construction zone. So what? It's an older building. But, you know, the, the, the lack of messaging from the government on this just makes it clear that they wanted us all to freak out over this because we knew it was coming, but not immediately right now, giving no one a chance to, to do anything about it. But because that's a lot easier to talk about than the Ontario line going up 43 percent. It's now twenty seven point two billion dollars. And of course, that figure is a guesstimate. We know that's also going to go crazy, but it's much easier for the Ford government to have people, you know, saying, well, this was our plan all along. We told you we we're going to move the science center. We're doing it now for safety. But as I say, they did poor messaging on this. Hopefully the opposition leaders and uh, both uh, Bonnie Crombie and, and Merritt Stiles were at the protest on Sunday saying they would fight tooth and nail to keep the science center open. I didn't see Olivia Chow there. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, if the two opposition leaders, what they need to do is take uh, tons and tons of cases of beer down to the science center and say, here's your priority. You right. know, right. we got the beer. This is what the government thinks is really more important. And it is hot and muggy, and a beer does feel good. But a billion dollars or 600 million, whatever it costs to get the beer, versus at most tens of millions over five years to get the Ontario Science Center, just keep it up and running and keep that you know new subway station across the street that's named for the Science Center. Oh, we don't have to rebrand that. because Anyway, all of this just looks you know back in the envelope, fly by night, purely political. Let's have us talking and get outraged about this, what they're going to say was our plan all along. We announced this. And the Ontario line, well, you know, we'll talk more about the Science Centre. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, I, I am very lucky to have a seat at the big morning roundtable radio show in Toronto on Monday mornings at 745. And uh, this Monday morning, when former Mayor John Tory started the panel, I said, uh, if we're going to set the table on this weekend's announcements, let's do both. The Friday announcement about the Ontario line going billions over and the Science Center. So here on the pod, and whenever I get a chance, I make sure to mention all of the news coming out of Ford government, not just the stuff they want us to freak out about. But even on the freak out factor, you mentioned the offer from a private citizen. It's McNamara, one of the guys who started Spotify. He called out Ford and he said, listen, if this is just about the roof repair, buddy, I got this. I'll send you the wire on Monday morning. Or is there another agenda? So, Mark, on this show, we have covered the other agenda, the obvious agenda. And I certainly ranted on the radio about it this morning. But what was your reaction when you heard the Science Center bullshit that came out? And I got to give the Beaverton credit. When uh, my op-ed was shared in Ottawa, someone contacted me and said, uh, Laura, you know, they were quoting the Beaverton that said, you know, that newsflash or whatever, the Ontario Science Center roof collapses because of Doug Ford's bullshit. <laughs> So, so how did you, what was your reaction, Mark, to, to all of this? Well, I, I think as you dug deeper into it over the weekend, you realize that the government completely mis, uh, misread or misrepresented the report about the, uh, the, the roof and the stability of the roof. And, and that, you know, considering that it's going to take, even if this moves, it's going to be like 2028 or something before it's ever open why not like spend the 500 grand just to keep such a you know I, I i was really moved by some of the uh the youth that were lamenting about the closure of this facility and how important it was to them and it just seemed so crass and crude and i think the timing was actually deliberate in that 
you know, the school season is wrapping up. You're not, you know, you're not, you, you know, you're not upending a lot of school trips to the science center and it gives them, uh, you know, an easy way out of, of, uh, uh, you know, a political mess for them, a real political mess. The next green belt kind of level protest where people were ramping up and getting ready and, and they, you know, they had just, um, you know, they're just, the, the costs of this to move it are what really, I think people need to focus on because, you know, it, it will cost $170 million more to move this to Ontario Place. And we all know the real end game here is to get a parking lot. This justifies a parking lot. This justifies this, you know, this empire that the conservatives for decades have wanted to build down at Ontario's waterfront. They are all in cahoots. They want to build something on the waterfront that they can you know, look back upon in years while people are losing their shirts in the casino and everything else and say, we built that. And what strikes me about this most is the waste of money. So when you get to the waste of money, this government is wasting money at a clip that is I've never seen. And I look at I worked in the liberal government. I often thought we were wasting a lot of freaking money. <laughs> but I mean, the way these guys are burning through money and while rural hospitals, you know, people who vote for this party in rural Ontario are seeing their ERs close. You know, people are homeless on the streets. You know, autism funding has never been supplied like it was supposed to. And yet these guys are burning money at a clip and there's no accountability for it. I think Mike Schreiner said it best. He said they are they're immune to accountability. Or what was allergic. it? No, I think you said they're yeah, allergic. allergic, allergic to accountability. Yeah. You know, that's what strikes me the most is that they seem kind of like they don't give a fuck. Right. Like they just don't seem to care. And this was a really crass and political move. And I hope this unites people mm -hmm. because, you know, remember in the last election, only 43 percent of Ontarians voted. Only 18 percent voted for this government. Now they are creating, you know, uh, issues that people will get behind, that will vote against them on. And I think they're they're gambling a lot with this, with the with the people's patience with them. So that well, gambling you know, seems to be what they're focused on. <laughs> <laughs> to the point, this decision, you mentioned the fact that they had a small minority, and I brought this up on in terms of plurality, I brought this up on the radio, is that Doug Ford won successive majorities, the last one, by an incredibly small voter turnout, like 18% of sort of the people of Ontario wanted this government. Now, is that our system? Sure. Did he win it fairly? Sure. Is he going to try to probably buy our vote again by beer and quarter stores at the cost of a billion dollars to cancel a contract? Sure. Day after day, all we see is insult and injury to the people of Ontario by this government that is ruling by fiat that doesn't bother to explain or make the case for things, and that doesn't care about our outrage because they're profiting their private sector pals. They don't give a fuck about the people of Ontario. The question is, do the people of Ontario give enough of a fuck about ourselves, and especially our most vulnerable people, and our healthcare, and our environment, and the people in long-term care to stand up to Ford, to stand up, to reverse these bad decisions like we did on the Green Belt? This conservative government is spending like drunken liberals. But every social factor you point to is way worse than it was four to six years ago, including the homeless encampments everywhere, the, the drug problems, the long-term care issues. We're seeing now a whole bunch of closures of long-term care by private operators because they don't want to put the money in to renovate them because they can close these facilities, kick people out at $5,000 a month and charge $7,500 a month in their new facilities. There's a place... Uh, uh, Alavita in Ottawa, they're a long-term care operator. I think they've got half a dozen homes or more in the Ottawa area. They lured people in with discounts, some substantial discounts, $1,800, $2,000 a month. Now they're telling people, well, we can't afford those anymore. Sign a new contract. And basically, again, because your rent is controlled, but the services in these things are not controlled by rent control. So all of a sudden, their service fees are going to go up by $2,500, $3,000 a month on top of their rent. So seniors, some, one woman 97 years old, confused, signing a document, and being forced out of their homes. Where is the government in this? Where are they saying, you know, you're giving out contracts, multi-year contracts to long-term care companies, private firms, and you're not holding them responsible to make sure that every senior 
in a home that has to be closed is housed in a new home or in Not another holding home? them responsible, the Keith. They literally, one of their first things they did when they got their first majority government was remove the possibility to sue these private long-term care Absolutely. homes for negligence. I mean, they not only do they not care, they are egregiously profiting off of our most vulnerable it's and they've deregulated as we learned from dr vivian so you don't need any kind of qualifications to go and work with seniors who are our most vulnerable people in this province i mean no, like, they're taking the nursing at a nursing home they absolutely yes. they want the regulation so there's no nursing nurses in the actual nursing home anymore right. all of their priorities are what we're questioning here yes and when it comes down to the yep. therme spa and a $600 billion parking garage for the Therme Spa that Ontario is moving the Science Centre there will help justify this. No, it won't. No one is buying that at all. In <laughs> fact, if you leave the Science Centre where it is, and by the way, it's the end destination of the end of the line for the new subway that's up 42% or 43%, whatever the hell it is. Why not have, because I remember as a kid going to school in Hamilton, coming in at least two or three times for those trips to the Science Centre. Would have been much better, actually, if we could have parked at Ontario Place and taking the subway and would have been a cool ride for the kids. You know, we didn't have a subway in Hamilton. Would have been a something. There's so many options here. And yet the ones seem to be, let's take care of our corporate friends and and, and uh, donors, uh, our party insiders, as it were. And, you know, the rest of the social problems are just going to hell here. I mean, the homeless encampments, it's not just the cities. It's everywhere. Now, you're out on Saturdays. I know, Laura, you know, you have a thousand people in line this Saturday, people yeah. in wheelchairs, people with, with taped on limbs. I mean, Taped on horrible, limbs, horrible taped shit. on limbs, like not. Yeah, that, that one got me. Was... Like I, I, I saw a guy with with duct tape holding on a, a metal make like a like a, a a homemade prosthetic. I mean, it, 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 To me, it's a human rights violation to let people suffer with no shelter, no health care, no access to regular water or food, but for the generosity of others. I'm not saying I'm generous. I'm just simply dancing and handing out cookies and observing what I'm seeing. What I'm saying is that this is a government that it's not just that they have, I think, some secret dream that they're working on for a casino on the waterfront. It's not just that they are taking down a science center and like with no notice and being completely disrespectful to the people of Ontario. It's the fact that the money that they're wasting on canceling a beer contract and on this subway thing running like 43% over in one year, the terrible financial management, the waste of our tax dollars, they're doing it at a time when we don't have hospitals open, when we don't have access to healthcare, when seniors are dying in squalor and poverty and people are being forced out onto the streets. Seniors being one of the major demographics of homelessness. We'll find out about more on the upcoming O Show special. We are here at a time when the people of Ontario at the lowest level of income with the most challenges are being kicked in the face by this premier and his private sector pals and his corrupt party the PC party of Ontario is literally spitting in the face of most people in Ontario, people who need their government to do the basics. And so it's not enough to talk about the Science Centre as some nostalgic or symbolic or architectural gem. It's about what the decision to spend $140 million to move it means when they could have just improved it right there on that site. It means that someone is going to profit off this. Someone's probably going to build condos on that land. Somebody close to the Ford government's probably going to be part of some casino and we're just sitting by watching them take apart this province we talk corruption guys this is about the destruction of ontario they are destroying our public assets they are destroying our health care they are destroying the very things that made this province once great the question mark what are we going to do about it? Are the people going to rise up like they did on the green belt? Or are we just going to become a nerd by there's so much cruelty that we just fucking give up? We are living in a time right now um, where everything's Justin Trudeau's fault. And <laughs> conservative premiers are hiding behind the, the incredible animosity that has been generated by their, by their machine across this country that has made him the villain of everything. And the premiers are escaping accountability for this and they're operating at full speed to do whatever damage they can do because at the end of the day, it's Trudeau's fault. So, you know, I, I think this is even more insidious than we will we ever see because this, this cloak, this political cloak shows us 
that the spirit of this government, the intent of this government is not to help people. Who gives a shit if we're living in a world what, for right or wrong, you know, people have this relationship with Justin Trudeau. I don't give a shit. I care what happens in my province, right? I've worked in government. I know what government is supposed to do, the services it's supposed to provide. They are not federal services. Homelessness, housing, health care, these are all responsibilities of the provincial government. And they are all the worst it's ever been in the history of this province. And the amount of, like, when I hear the billions, the billions that are being spent on these pet projects and the overruns, like, you know, like this, like, I'm going to tell you something. Somebody needs to dive in to the contracts that are being awarded for the Ontario line. Because I guarantee you that there are some prominent associations, unions that are benefiting and are all donors to the Doug Ford government. And they are using our money to basically enrich, like we've we've said this a thousand times, enrich their buddies. That's exactly what they're doing. One thing I will note, though, is Olivia Chow said this morning, or I saw a press conference with her. She said no housing on the Ontario Place site. That's not what they're using it for. So if it's not going to be used for housing now, what like what's the what's the freaking what's the business case now? I thought like you know at least people could say well. You know, we need housing. They're going to use all that land to build housing. She said, no, no housing there. And Doug just said, well, we'll be there to support you with whatever you decide to do. Right. <laughs> like uh, we are know, being taken... that meeting, that meeting between Olivia Chow and Doug Ford uh, mm, was uncomfortable. Is concerning to me because yeah. she she campaigned about not allowing Ontario Place to be taken and, and used in the way that Ford's using it and then got some funding and, and all is kosher now like I don't all school now I don't know what Olivia's game is I don't know what the backroom deal is there but you know I and I hate to have these questions but I think they're questions that we need to ask and as to your point are we going to recognize the names of the people who benefit from these billions and overruns on this Ontario line probably because we've probably seen them multiple times with this Ford government there is a cluster of private sector donors that Ford enriches and they enrich the PC party they build a huge war chest and as you mentioned on the last OSHO scandal panel he extended his cabinet took five months off so they could all go out and fundraise like the one I mentioned earlier we are we are watching i don't know if the word is kleptocracy or whatever kleptocracy but we are watching yeah. our money being stolen from us given to the wealthy at the expense of seniors and children and people with disabilities and people with autism it's at their expense yeah. it's at the expense of our children and their future and their education keith uh the autism file is always one that that always got me. The, the, I remember the parents coming to Queens Park in the late '90s and just begging for help and bringing their children, and, you know, just just really, really needed help. And at that time, a lot of parents had to give up custody of their child to get them the help. So that was correct. I mean, the governments were so, and but they started an autism program, and they, they the Liberals tried to get it going, and of course, the waiting list just kept growing. When the Ford government came in, they completely killed the program, overhauled it completely, and the waiting, waiting list grew from 14,000 to 20,000 kids waiting for basic service. It's now at 70,000. The government said it was providing enough money for at least 20,000 to get the core services, but the families tell us it's about 10,000. And even then, they're giving the money to the families and saying, go find the services yourself. Well, the services all closed down when you shut the program down. They could hardly get So all of it's just... That I mentioned this only because it's one example of a program that they just completely, completely screwed up. And one where parents are just so desperate. They're, they're second mortgaging their houses. They're doing everything they can to pay for this very, very, very expensive service for their uh, ABA, IBA, uh, intensive behavioral therapy for children. If, if you can find a therapist, if you can get them to take you. The government has just watched this list grow so long, money would have made a huge difference. Money that's going for a parking garage for the Thermae Spa, money that's going to the beer stores to so we can get beer in the corner store and a gas station a year earlier. What the hell? They, 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 like those projects, see, seeing your money just literally being pissed away to the beer yeah. store when we could have just waited up like 14, 15 months and we would have been just fine. That, 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 that 250, if we just take the minimum amount they're admitting to, the 250 million, 
That would have made a huge difference in the autism file. It would have made a huge difference to so many communities just dealing with the homeless encampments, just getting some services to those people, some emergency services. All these basic, basic things have all gotten worse, not better. But yet I can go to Staples and sit in a business chair now while I'm waiting for my service Ontario kiosk. Because it, yeah, it's just insane. The priorities seem to be so skewed, but will the voters jump on board or will they just shrug it off? And as, as Mar- you know, you know what, Trudeau we are- is still the villain here. So I, if Doug Ford goes before while well, Trudeau is still the federal uh, prime minister, yeah. he could get elected again unless people really get together and pick an issue and get behind it. And also, uh, I said on the radio this morning, and I've said it before, if Trudeau, depending on this by-election outcome in Toronto, which is, I think, a test of him, and that 5% increase in the polls that he was going to have by June, if he doesn't meet those metrics, I think he needs to take the equivalent of his dad's long walk in the winter wood. He can go for a surf on the BC coast, whatever the hell it takes, uh, to make a decision about whether or not taking his name out of the equation might, in fact, be what's needed uh, to have a viable Liberal Party and to to, as you said earlier, and it really broke my heart to hear it. I think you said it, Mark. You said that these premiers are doing as much damage as they can. Think about that, everybody, as we mm-hmm. leave the show today. Doing as much damage as they can. Like, this is destruction. This is destruction of our public assets. Destruction of our cult- our cultural assets. A destruction of the life, the quality of life and the health care of the people who are most vulnerable. And if you can't get access to IBI, intensive behavioral intervention, or or ABA services, if you have autism, every year you wait can change the trajectory of your entire life. You know, this is is not pet pet projects or things that we happen to care about, uh, because as I think Jerry said this morning, something about being soft or whatever on on an issue around encampments. It's not about being soft. It's about being human. It's about being human and not being hard on the people who already have it the worst. I mean, the worst. Uh, So I am blessed to have the privilege of being able to meet people who are uh, living in um, situations every weekend where they share with me their, their, their troubles and to have a platform to be able to do the special on homelessness that's coming later this week. Um, But I got to tell you, it is so much worse than most of us are even aware of. And when you have a government who's intent on doing damage and destruction through corruption, uh, it's going to be easy to live in Ontario in 10 years if you're wealthy. You're going to have access to every service that you need. It's the millions of others who are going to suffer terribly if we don't stop this Ford government. That's what it just comes down to. So I want to thank both of you, um, Mark and Keith. And as I always say, it's not that I'm partisan. I don't care liberal, NDP, green, conservative. I'm I'm biased against corruption and I'm biased against cruelty towards people. Um, and I think if we don't find a time to speak up, whether it's a science center, green belt, homelessness, autism, uh, you know, closing of ERs in rural communities, whatever we need to speak up about, now is the time, right? Not when the beer's in the stores and the election is called and we're all busy. Now is the time. Talk to your neighbors. Make sure you get out and vote. It's one thing to yell on our podcast, gentlemen. It's quite another. And and I appreciate the thousands and thousands, tens of 20,000s of views we get to these clips. Um, But it's not enough. We have to make sure that people understand that they have a real opportunity in a democracy such as it is to go out and to vote for the values that uh, are their priorities and the priorities of the people they care about. Thanks, guys, for doing the Scandal Panel and for everyone across Canada and around the world who's paying attention uh, to the corruption and destruction of Ontario, Canada. It's mind boggling. We're not overstating it, Um, but we are on it. That's for sure. Okay, take care, guys. Enjoy your Canada Day weekend as well. Thank you. When you care about current affairs, it's on the old show. And when you want to get clear what's going on here, it's on the old show. If you like to stay in the know, tune yourself into the old show. It's the old show. Laura Babcock's the old show. With a lot of great guests, she puts them to the test on the old show. There's no doubt they'll be calling them out on the old show. Stand for something, or fall for it all. Ontario, hear the call of the old show. It's a podcast, the old show. Laura Babcock's the old show. Stay informed with the old show, old show. Your merch, your merch <laughs>